Hey everybody, welcome back to US Arc's official channel. My name is Garrett Hartle. I'm Phil Goss, president of US Arc. So I think the biggest question that all of us in the reptile industry have right now is what the heck with this like competes act. Can you please give us like the official update as it stands right now? So the America Competes Act, HR 4521 passed the house. That sounds kind of scary, but what's gonna happen now, it went to the Senate. The Senate is gonna reconcile that bill. So there will be a formal conference committee formed that has House representatives and senators. They will look at HR 4521 in the Senate version of that, which is S1260. In the beginning, S1260 is gonna replace HR 4521. So at least intermittently, these Lacey Act amendments will go away. The goal now is to keep contacting legislators because we do not want those Lacey Act amendments making it into the reconciled bill. So again, initially, S1260 is going to replace HR 4521. Okay. HR 4521 is way bigger, and we want to keep all that extra stuff from the House bill and making it into the reconciled bill. So, what do I need to do, or our viewers need to do, as a part of the concerned reptile community right now? Just keep contacting your legislators. So, US ARC makes it super easy. Just go to our alert, it tells you how to contact both your representatives and senators. Just go there, contact them. You'll have two senators and one representative at the federal level. Uh, shoot them emails and especially do phone calls and even mailed letters actually carry a little more weight than emails do. And I can find all those instructions on usart.org or that link is conveniently for you in the description. So they can literally click the link and there's gonna be step-by-step -step instructions how you can save the reptile industry. The more people who voice opposition, the better it is because legislators wanna hear from their constituents. So when a group like US Art goes in and actually meets with them or these days has a Zoom meeting with them, they'll know what we're talking about and they wanna hear from us. If they've only had 10 constituents contact them, they're kinda of not gonna to wanna to listen to us. If they've had 10,000, then they wanna to listen to us and they'll, pay attention to what we're saying. The main thing, just super easy. So your subject line, you'll especially want to say just something super simple like no to Lacey Act amendments. And then you want to specifically ask that the Lacey Act amendments do not get included into the merged S1260 and HR 4521 bill. These are your legislators and they want to hear from you. So tell them your personal story. And then in addition to the sample letter, below that we have 20 plus talking points. So maybe oh, one cool. or two of those talking points will really stick out to you. So along with telling your personal message, you can grab two or three or four of those talking points and kind of work those into your message too. Great, so I don't have to write a whole page or anything like that. Oh, Just no, 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 no. hit no. a couple of main points, how they interact with me. And then is there a way that I can like, should I provide like information for them to follow up or anything like that? Yes, you absolutely can. Give them information to contact you back and not only the DC offices, but all legislators will have state offices too, what we call district offices. You'll really want to contact them because when the legislators go on what's called recess, they'll usually spend time in their district offices. The, a lot of times there'll be an opportunity to possibly meet with them or a staffer even, especially if you're a business, you may want to make that say, hey, can I come in and actually meet with someone in the office? And then you go in the district office. So if you're living in Oregon or Montana, you don't have to fly all the way to DC. Okay. You can wait till the legislators come to their district office and maybe meet with a legislator or a staff. Wow, that's yep. awesome. Now I know a lot of this sounds like maybe a little bit confusing or out of your comfort zone, but I think stepping up out of our comfort zone is what this is all about. Remember that your tax dollars pay for a legislator's job. They are literally there to listen to you. So never feel uncomfortable about, uncomfortable about speaking with a legislator because again, they wanna hear what you have to say. That's what they're paid to do. That's a big part of their job. And again, it's your tax money who funds their job. So never feel insecure or uncomfortable about going in and talking to them. They work for us. Yes, they do work That's for awesome. us. So you guys that are out there in YouTube land, if you wanna do something to save the future of the pet keeping industry, click this link below. We'll make it really easy for you. We could really use your help on this one. Even if you don't even have any reptiles, if you like watching people like me that do have reptiles, I'm just asking for your love and support on this one. We need it, guys. All right, hopefully you guys have stuck along this far because there's another update that just happened yesterday at the time of this release. And that is that the process has moved on and the committee that is going to reconcile these two bills has been named. You can check the link out in the description. We'll go ahead and link that up to who those guys are. It is more important than ever that we all contact our members of Congress so that they can understand how bad this little piece of extra language in this bill would be for our entire industry. So now is the time, guys. Like, 
comment, share this video like a wildfire and tell everybody how important this is. Thank you guys in the reptile industry. We'll catch you next time.